And this is case four. We have a large excision of skin here. You can see this is the normal epidermis for, for uh, comparison and contrast. Normal epidermis here, and you can see abundant pigment. This is a dark skin, darkly pigmented um, individual. And then the skin suddenly gets much thicker. Um, the epidermis gets very thick, and it looks a lot like uh, kind of like lichen simplex chronicus with, you know, this reactive thickening of the epidermis like you'd see in uh, scratching or rubbing or itching of the skin with some spongiosis. So if you just had this, I mean, I think it'd be very reasonable to think that this could be a spongiotic dermatitis that's been scratched a lot. But then over on this side, it starts getting way, way thicker, and you have these large expanded uh, reedy ridges that push down into the dermis, deeply into the dermis, and get kind of bulbous and expanded at the bottom. And they have a very pale pink abundant cytoplasm in these keratinocytes. And uh, as it comes into focus here, we'll see that there's abundant, what we call the abundant pink uh, that's kind of smudgy and homogenized. We call that glassy, glassy or homogenized. And the, the word hyalinized could also be used. Hyalos is the Greek word uh, for glass, at least in, in ancient Greek, I believe. And so when we say hyalinized in pathology, we mean kind of homogenous, smudgy pink. And we use that word for lots of different things, but this is glassy, glassy cytoplasm here. And uh, the keratinocyte nuclei are actually quite small and bland. There's not very much cytologic nuclear atypia here, just abundant glassy cytoplasm and these broad, big reedy that are becoming bulbous and expanded and pushing deeply into the dermis. And on the surface, there is some degree of kind of verrucous uh, architectural change, not really prominent in this case here, but over here, you can see there's a little bit of kind of warty look to the surface. So this is verrucous carcinoma. And uh, despite uh, the name and despite what the uh, older uh, and sometimes even uh, more modern articles say, uh, my, my understanding at least is that our current thinking is that verrucous carcinoma is not actually HPV associated. But when you go read about this in the literature, there's a lot of overlap between the term verrucous carcinoma and giant condyloma of Bushke and Lowenstein and carcinoma caniculatum. And these words have been used uh, interchangeably or overlappingly in the past. And so it's made the literature, especially the older literature, incredibly difficult to understand and muddy. But uh, my view and, and understanding is that these are not actually HPV associated. They are different from a true condyloma that's very large. Um, but both of them uh, can be locally uh, kind of aggressive. And so in, in, in any case, um, I think there are similar concerns and considerations for how these are handled clinically. Uh, there is a more nuanced discussion than we have time for today, but I'll put a link to a great article about, um, about um, anogenital squamous proliferations uh, by uh, Dr. May Chan uh, in Archives of Pathology. And it's act, uh, just a beautifully written and illustrated article um, uh, that Dr. Chan did a wonderful job with. And I just really recommend everybody who's, who struggles with how to, uh, what, what words to use for anogenital squamous lesions uh, to go read that article. So I'll put a link down below. It's freely available uh, from Archives of Pathology. But, um, and I've also got some other videos about verrucous carcinoma if you want a more in-depth discussion. But basically just know that it is kind of verrucous on the surface, usually, in this case not so much, has abundant um, uh, uh, dense keratin, often parakeratosis, glassy expanded reedy, but no nuclear atypia, and is HPV negative. And um, these often arise in the anogenital region, but you also see them on the sole of the foot and also in the oral cavity. Although I think in the oral cavity, they look a little bit different and a little more subtle to my eye, but I don't do a ton of oral pathology, so I still find a lot of oral, oral pathology lesions very challenging. So on a superficial biopsy, a superficial shave, this tumor can be almost impossible, and in some cases, truly impossible to diagnose. You really usually have to see the base of the lesion to see if they're expanded, pushing, type invasion down at the bottom. And also you usually have to have the clinical um, um, uh, information to know how big of a lesion is this. These are usually large lesions that deeply push into the dermis. And the other thing, and I'll again, I'll put a link down to below to a video that discusses this in more depth. I have found that at the periphery of verrucous carcinoma, sometimes you see stuff that looks more like lichen simplex chronicus and really doesn't have those glassy expanded reedy. I mean, if I just had a biopsy of this, I would not call it verrucous carcinoma personally. 
Um, I would say LSC, or I, I, I would wonder about different things, but I would uh, not really think of, of Verruckus carcinoma. But I have seen cases where there was stuff like this that I thought was not Verruckus carcinoma that went out to the margin, and I thought the margins were negative, and then the tumor recurred. A couple of times actually recurred. So I've, I'm convinced that there are times that Verruckus carcinoma can have areas that really um, are, are very difficult to distinguish from reactive epidermal hyperplasia, and, um, and yet still probably represent a component of Verruckus carcinoma. So I now add a little comment that, you know, I don't see obvious Verruckus carcinoma at the margins, but if there's any stuff that looks like this, I'll say that, you know, I can't be totally sure and to closely follow the patient. So uh, Verruckus carcinoma, just a very short um, uh, discussion of it and a pretty nice example though here. And remember, if it looks kind of Verruckus, and yet has a lot of atypia, then that probably uh, is better to regard as a, a conventional squamous cell carcinoma. In some squames have a warty surface, but I would not call those verrucous carcinoma. And if you're frustrated and confused by this terminology, you're in good company. I find it frustrating and confusing as well, as do I think many other pathologists that I've talked to. So it's, it's a struggle and the, uh, the overlapping literature in the past has made it even harder to understand. All right. Oh, and I did forget to mention one other thing about Verrucus carcinoma that's important to know, and I, uh, not to belabor this, is that it is locally aggressive and has a high risk of local recurrence, but, but true Verrucus carcinoma has essentially no metastatic potential unless it converts into a conventional squamous cell carcinoma, which can happen sometimes, at least from what I've been taught. And so uh, once it, if it transitions into a more conventional squamous cell carcinoma with obvious cytologic atypia, then of course it would have metastatic potential. But otherwise, the biggest issue here is one of local control and aggressive local growth and high risk of recurrence. Um, rather than a risk of metastasis. So that's the other important consideration about Verrucus carcinoma as opposed to other forms of squamous cell carcinoma.